Hi everyone, I am Bethany Wilson and this is Ask a Puppy Trainer Live. This is our second episode. I say our because I'm missing someone. Uh, Sparky couldn't make it today, but we'll do okay without him, it's all right. So, <laughs> but we wish him well, <laughs> he'll be back next week. So um, I'm going to join, turn myself down, okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna join on my phone, so I will be checking my phone for questions, but I already have a list of questions that have come in. You can submit questions through direct message, through um, IG stories, like when you have the little question bubble pop up, and then you guys can type your questions below in the comments section, and, and I'll get to as many as I can. We are gonna be doing this every Wednesday, guys, one o'clock, so I just wanna remind you of that. Um, a, a tip for me that's really helpful when you guys submit questions is put the age of your puppy and the breed of the dog. Uh, that helps me a lot. It gives me a lot of information uh, right off the bat. Okay, so we're doing this show because we just wanna get to know our Instagram community and be able to help you guys more and give you more direct access to us. Um, especially with the last year, <laughs> puppy raising is through the roof. And so we just wanna help as much as we can. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. Um, I got a really <laughs> great question from Blaze, the uh, Belgian Malinois puppy. 10 weeks old, oh my goodness, Lord help you. Uh, we, were abs we, were, uh, we absolutely adore him, he's a joy to have around. Um, we did know the breed, they researched the breed. I like how they mentioned that because they didn't want me to scold them. Good for you. <laughs> they do understand that the breed is a biter. Um, Belgian Malinois are um, mal maligators. If you haven't heard, it's, it's, it's actually a maligator, not a Malinois. Um, do you have any advice on how to tackle this? Because we, we do want to teach him not to bite us as soon as possible before it becomes a real problem. Um, it, it is different it's with some Malinois, not all. So I have definitely worked with Malinois that are driven, but they can be family dogs. And then I've worked with other Malinois that, you know, I say a little prayer for their family. <laughs> and so uh, I don't know which one you are. And honestly, you may not either, unless you've raised other Malinois before, you know, to have a puppy puppy comparison. But, um, you can build a lot of frustration if you own, this goes for every puppy, but let's just say it goes quadruple for Malinois, is you can build a lot of frustration if you're just telling your puppy, no, don't bite me. If you're just doing, we teach blocking and spatial pressure. If you're just blocking and saying no, um, if you're using a pet corrector, which squirts out air, if you're using the leash and there's a lot of no in the house, you will create a lot of frustration, and then by adolescence, you can have a really frustrated, nippy, biting uh, Malinois. So I do need you to say no. Uh, I do need you to go ahead and teach no right away. However, there has to be a lot of redirection on the back end and an outlet for the, the biting. So if I get a driven Malinois puppy, I kind of mentioned this last week, eight weeks old, they're already tugging. I'm teaching drop it right away. There's lots of different ways to teach drop it, especially, <clears throat> excuse me, especially with a driven dog. I like to be active and move the toy around when I'm tugging, be gentle with, with puppy teeth. Um, active and then I freeze. I tuck my elbows in, especially with the stronger dogs, and I freeze and I wait for the puppy to get bored and, and I calm my breathing and everything down. And then when they let go, I say, drop it. And then it's mine. Then I might use blocking if the puppy comes back to me. Um, and then I say, break. I have him sit her down, say, break for a release word. The reason I'm going into all that is because you need to be doing that right away. Um, tugging as well as fetch. Uh, I would get into, maybe not this early, but you, you're gonna wanna look into flirt pull work and uh, there are trainers that specialize in how to turn that on and off. My point is you're gonna need an outlet for all that drive. The other thing I really want you to work on is, um, I know this isn't directly related to your question, but it, but it is, is uh, place. So he can't do place duration yet. He can't go to a bed and lay down for an hour, but you can teach place and then you can move away. And when he steps off, no move in and start teaching spatial pressure with crate door and with, with place. So that way when in the future, when you might try a squirt of a pet corrector or you might try to stand up and step into your puppy to settle down their, their nipping, 
you have a no and then they learn that with that type of blocking they learn that with a no to settle back because you've worked on it with place and with drop it and all these other commands that mean back off and settle and then you know we can move forward with something you have to have that no have some some context behind it so the back off and settle and then you have to redirect to, to something else I think um, where people accidentally go wrong is they do too much no 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 because there's not enough structure in the house and they're not looking at ways to set their puppy up to succeed and then on the back end you've got someone who is only redirecting and and not adding any value you to know um, whatsoever and then that becomes an issue an issue as well now your puppy is so young so if he's very sensitive uh, don't don't do anything with the leash don't try a pet corrector or anything like that just teach them um, spatial pressure as it means to resetting in place crate door drop it and then that way all those things will start to filter uh, into one another and then just remember that around the the five four five six month mark you're gonna reach a new phase of training that you're gonna to need to transition to right away because I hope you're doing tons of food work right now um, as well okay I'm gonna I could talk about that all day I'm gonna move on if you have any follow-ups blaze uh, make sure that um, or blaze's mom uh, make sure that you you let us know for for next week I'd, I'd love to hear I'd love to hear you try some of these things and then um, look back and hear back excuse me all right why does my puppy love people during the day but bark at them at night Night is scary for dogs. They are predators by nature. Even your cute little Maltese at home is a predator. <laughs> and so um, their senses are heightened at night. And when they're a puppy, it creates nervousness and they get unsure and insecure. So don't pressure your puppy. Build confidence on night walks, lots of food work, even work in the backyard, things like that. Um, when will my puppy, this is from Elaine, when will my puppy perform his commands without the food reward and thank goodness for this golden retriever five months old that's super helpful elaine um okay so that's a that's a really good question your the five month mark is usually where we're still using quite a bit of food but we're starting to phase it out so there's lots of different ways you can do that one of the ways is i'm going to use all my hand motions but i'm not going to have food in my hand I'm gonna have my puppy do three, four, five commands with hand motions, then say, good, then reach into my pouch, then deliver the food. It's that, that sequence instead of having food or going good while you're reaching in and they're not even listening. Good, reach in pouch, deliver food. And then you could do several food rewards in a row that same way, sit down, well, your puppy should know sit by now. That's too easy. Stop giving food for sit unless there's a dog barking, walking by, unless there's a distraction. So for the easy stuff, you're not giving food anymore. But for come, uh, give food three, four, five times in a row, and then uh, wait three times. Wait three commands. So but mix it up. Puppies are so good at picking up on patterns. You want to keep them guessing, honestly. At five months old, though, I will say, outside, out on a walk, we're still always using food for another uh, month or two, honestly, depending on, on the, the maturity of the, the dog, um, depending on the maturity of the puppy. Inside, though, you should be using, you should be weaning off quickly, very quickly. And then the other aspect of that is your puppy's right at the point where they can handle a bit more accountability. They're starting to mature, they're starting to get into adolescence. So I talk about spatial pressure a lot. The more of that you're doing, hey, knock it off, good. Like the more kind of accountability for those moments of really addressing hyperactivity or whatever it might be, um, will also allow you to wean off of food faster. Cause your dog is just at that phase where they're starting to become an adolescent. And so you'll, you need to start learning uh, from us, from whoever your trainer is. Uh, Elaine, isn't this one of ours? Yeah, this is one of our, okay, so you'll start, <laughs> you'll start learning with us <laughs> how to give your, your uh, puppy more accountability. But for the rest of you out there, it's like you, you need to seek a, seek a trainer. Don't, uh, don't seek, if I have a five, six, seven month old dog, I'm not gonna look for a puppy puppy trainer that's eight, 10, 12, 14 weeks, and that's where their, their sweet spot is. I'm gonna look for a trainer that's good with adolescent dogs. 
and that's what I'm going to start transitioning to. Okay. Um, all right. One more from the, the DMs and uh, from Instagram DMs, and then I'll get to your guys' questions. So this one's kind of a long one, so I'm going to shorten it. This is from Aaron. I really love this question. I think it's so common. Um, they have a nine week, nine week old puppy who hates being in her puppy pen. Uh, she's lost all of her siblings. She was around all of her siblings for a while. I think this person actually had her siblings and um, now it's just her and she's never she's never really loved the pin but it's worse now that she doesn't have her siblings she's doing crate training at night and that's going well but she is still learning to quote love it during the day um, we've moved past constant treats with the door closed for a few minutes okay so and she has you know lots of things to do in her playpen which i i under i understand what you mean by that uh, but the thing is if if the puppy has you in sight then no, they're not gonna be good in their playpen. Very few puppies, Sparky and I have talked about this a ton, just kind of talking about our experience with this because it's a tricky issue. Very few puppies that both of us have ever known have been good in a playpen with people in the house or moving around the house or even just sitting on your on your couch. It's because they can see you and they don't have access to you. You'd think that that would create comfort, but it doesn't, it, it creates frustration and that's what you're seeing um, you need to go if, if you're dealing with this at home if your puppy's great ignore me but if you're dealing with this at home with a playpen your puppy just needs to be in a crate it's just gonna have to be a hard this is how it is there's no more siblings th th this is the way it is quiet area think about it as putting a baby to sleep uh, darker room cover the crate fans, uh, humidifier, white noise machine, radio. Think of some things you can do to make the transition as easy as possible. If your puppy's not a chewer, um, you could even put like something something warm, something uh, like a heating pad underneath, uh, but only if your puppy's not a chewer, but something that's gonna be nice and warm. Um, there are also these, um, I'd say this has worked for me maybe 30% of the time is those plush toys that you can actually put a little heartbeat in and they have a, a little heat warmer in them. Um, that might, because you were around the siblings, like you had the siblings, that might work for you. Now she might pee on it, she might chew it, <laughs> you have to watch for that. Um, but that could be something that you could look into that might help the transition. But she's not gonna, a lot of puppies don't love their crate. They learn to love their crate. They don't wanna be alone. So just like she doesn't love her playpen. So th that's what I would do, out of, out of sight. Get her, get her out of sight, let her cry it out a little bit. And um, hopefully in a couple of weeks, like around the two week mark, she'll, she'll start to settle. Okie dokie, I'm going to move on, <clears throat> excuse me, to my questions. All right, I'm scrolling up a bit so I can kind of try to go in order. At what age do you teach place? If your puppy has drive and is taking food, you teach it right away because all you're teaching is a target. Go here, get food, go here, get food. Teaching your puppy to stay in place, that's a whole nother thing. But go ahead and start teach, teaching um, targeting. Just like uh, uh, puppies, if you ever see fun Instagram you know, clips of puppy training, they have them target you know, the little rubber feed bowls you know, that are upside down. And just any targeting is really great for puppies. They build so much confidence so fast too. Uh, Riley says, my dog just lays down on our walk all the time. Any tips? Well, what's the reason? Is the puppy tired? Is it hot in your area? Because they are so sensitive to heat. Or is she unsure, like a little timid, a little unsure, and she'd rather go back home where she's comfortable? If that's the case, um, we just walk anyway. And, and I know that sounds overly simple, right? And I don't mean it that way. But what I do mean is that you've got to find a way to get your puppy out of this habit or it could really last a long time. First, make sure you're avoiding any homes that have dogs barking behind fences because that can just ruin your, your puppy. Um, but there's a few different things you can do. You can build food drives. So the dog only works for their food in front of the house or the condo and then in, in along the sidewalk. That's where they get their food. Their, their breakfast, where they're most hungry, is ideal. Or if your puppy won't take their food, try some treats, and then you can move on to, to their actual kibble, their actual food, hopefully within a few days. The other thing is, I would pick my puppy up and I would walk 
a little bit and then put them down again and get them moving. Uh, another thing is to change trajectory. So head back towards the house, then turn around and go back, you know, the opposite way. Go to the, go sideways if you can. Um, put your puppy in the car, drive a couple blocks over, work them on that block, drive home. I know that's a lot of work, but I'm just trying to give you different ideas that I have done, absolutely will do, because this is a this is a really common issue. And puppies get nervous. They like being home where they feel safe. They don't they don't like going outside. Um, another thing that I do want to say is uh, this is so important is when I say go for a you still have to go for a walk anyway. I do want you to try the attitude of too bad, let's go. Like just try it. You might be surprised how much you being hesitant is feeding into your puppy. But, but while I'm saying that, if your puppy comes to a hard stop, like have the leash loosen up a bit, let them sit and let them breathe and kind of take it all in. And then I might just be like, I might like bring the bag of food or treats with me. I might crinkle the bag and be like, mm, this is so mm, delicious, let's go. <laughs> just try a few things um, and the more you do it, you could try a park, going to a park, things like that. But the more you do that, the better she'll get. The big thing is gonna be creating food drive. Um, if your puppy is best at sit and come or sit break, take her outside when she stalls like that, pick her up, walk a few steps, put her back down and just do sit break for two to three minutes. Then see if she'll walk a few steps. There's lots of little things like that you can do, but don't give up, it's important. Okay, um, let's see. <clears throat> Just Cheryl says, any advice for a one-year-old uh, copper dog who gets upset when they cannot greet every dog they come across on the walks? Thank you, one-year-old. Okay, so Cheryl, you may have not done this, but just for, for everybody's sake, I'm just gonna mention here for a second, this is what happens a lot. You get this puppy and they say, um, this, you know, one of the best trainers in the, in the world, uh, his, his articles is like, you need to meet a hundred dogs or a hundred people in the first few months. And it's very daunting, honestly. But then what happens is you, you don't even know that many people, let, you know, let alone be able to have your dog meet that many people. So people let their puppies meet everybody on the walk whenever they're really, really young. And now we need control back over the walk. We need them to care about us. When we've accidentally conditioned them to seek out attention everywhere but here, but the owner, the handler. And so just for some of you young puppy owners, please keep that in mind. 90% of the people you see, the 90% of the dogs you see, you should be working on keeping your puppies focused and getting around them rather than saying hi to them. But okay, anyway, <laughs> there's my, my speech. So, so you, don't, you don't have to have this issue as much. But some dogs are overly social. I've got a German Shepherd that drives me crazy. So uh, like she's harder than my other dogs because she's, too social. So I do under I do understand some of it's just genetics. What I would like you to do is your dog is quite a bit older. She, you know, it's a full blown adolescent one year old dog. So there can be some accountability. Um, but I want to make sure that you're stopping at all thresholds. You're stopping and asking your dog to wait for permission to go out your front door. You you have their attention. They don't have to be staring at you, but they're not like hyper focused and already thinking about three blocks down the dog behind the fence that they want to see. Like they just need to be calm. You can use spatial pressure for that. You can move into your dog, have them get back, settle down, open the door, wait, and then walk out together. Um, or with your dog a little a little behind you is okay too. Um, you, you need to be setting, I could tell you exactly what to do and, and I will, but I also wanna make sure there are things in the house that you're doing that practice impulse control and make you someone to, to listen to. You can't just try in the biggest moments to, to matter to your dog. You have to prove it to them every day in the small moments. That's, that's most critical to all training, all training. Um, okay, so to be more specific, when, when you're walking down the street with your dog, it's all about timing. The, the moment the, the ears perk, like the, the moment they see something, Let's say your dog's name is Daisy. Okay, that's your dog's name, Daisy. So, Daisy, let's go. Turn and move. 
bubble out and move. You, you need to get your dog's attention in some way, shape, or form. Now, if she's really aroused, if she's pulling, if she's already barking, I might use a no and I might tug the leash, but I'm still moving and I'm really only doing damage control at that point. It's really about catching the early signs of arousal, the, the sequence, the cycle of arousal, interrupting that with, hey, follow me, let's, let's go this way. Let's go this way. And uh, that's, that's what I would start doing. If your dog's really food motivated at one year old, you can use food, but don't use a food lure to get your dog's attention like I would a puppy under six months old, okay? So over six months old, if I am using food, it's more like, hey, come on, let's go, like real authoritative, firm, you know, move it, kind of um, track coach, football coach, kind of tone of voice. Hey, let's go, turn and move at the first signs of arousal. Then after I've gotten several steps, then I might sit, give food, something, something like that to continue to keep a little bit of um, attention. So hopefully that helps you guys out. And it's a great question to give all of our younger puppy owners um, kind of a warning. <laughs> Okay, at what age should I take my puppy to a professional trainer? I mean, honestly, right away, especially if you don't have, um, that's, of course, that's my opinion. You're, you're like asking, <laughs> asking the wrong person. But um, don't wait till there's a problem. I have made my career um, here and elsewhere out of helping people who already have problems where the nipping puppy turned into the nipping adolescent dog turned into the biting um, adult dog, or just the dog that never stops barking or drags you down the down the you know walkway, can't be walked, things like that. Even just out of happiness, you know how many retrievers out there do so much happy-go-lucky barking that they can't be walked, you know? And so don't wait, <laughs> don't wait. And there's different phases. There's under five, six months, and then there's adolescent six to two years, and then there's mature dogs. There's different types of techniques and training, and I know there's an overload of information out there. I, I know that that can be frustrating, but, but don't wait, don't wait. There's several forms of communication, and you wanna learn all of them. There is your verbal commands, your tone, how that communicates to your dog. There's your leash, there's body language, that's the big one, that's their language. Right, and then there's any um, you know any tools that that you might be using. Okay, <laughs> Riley says I think she's just lazy. <laughs> she might be. She might be tired. Why don't you try, um, uh, uh, Riley? I'm pretty sure is the puppy that kept stopping on the walk. Um, why don't you try just going into your front yard or in front of your condo, your apartment building, wherever you live, and just work her for 10 minutes on basic obedience with food. Do some turns. Let's go and move. Sit move, and move. Uh, down. Down is really hard to do outside for young puppies. Um, just work her. Build her confidence. And then get in the car. Go two blocks down the next day. Do the same thing. That's what I would do. Because it is a bad habit. Um, let's see. Carol says, 11 week old barks a lot. How do we train not to bark constantly? Um, I, would love a, I would love a breed, um, but I'll tell you, Carol, you know, it's, it's, I am gonna try to answer your question, but it's, it's not necessarily enough information. Puppies bark for so many different reasons, even territorial. I just had a Zoom with a woman with a 10 week old Maltese that is nervous barking at every sound she hears in the apartment. Um, territorial nervous puppy barking. And so that matters, or, or is your puppy just barking in crate? You know, if they're just barking in crate, just try a no and tap crate and walk away, but make sure you're nurturing your puppy. Um, everybody likes to say, oh, my puppy needs more exercise, we need to go for walks, we need to play fetch. Um, work your puppy for food. Spend 15 minutes of working your puppy for food and having them slow down and wait at crate door, wait at thresholds, teach waiting in place, body language, um, listening to that, and that will tire your puppy out tremendously. And so a lot of times when puppies get into this type of barking, they've been given too much freedom Honestly, that's the big one. And then they're not getting the right mental stimulation. You might be nurturing the exercise aspect of them, uh, but not the, the mental work. And learning how to pause and take a look around 
and wait for permission to get food, go out of doorways, come out of crate, um, things like that. That's, that's mental work, that's mental work. If a dog is anxious outside, is it still good to be firmer? We've been sweetly positive and using food constantly. Um, yes, at, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Um, that's a great question. This is the one. The one-year-old dog again. So let me just kind of re re say that. Um, anxious dog outside. They've been really sweet, loving. Uh, lots of food work. One-year-old dog. So here's the thing. If I'm if I go more towards nurture, you got nature versus nurture. If I go more towards nurture, good job. It's okay. Let's go. Good. Sit. Good job, sweetie. Good job. The problem is no one's protecting the dog. That's how the dog feels. So um, you do need to be considerate, you do need to be kind, but you also need to be authoritative, confident, um, assertive, not assertive in a mean way, assertive as in, I got you, I'm not gonna let that car run over you. Hey, let's go, come on, good job. Like when you start to take on more that role for your dog, they feel more protected. They feel more protected. Now, I'm not saying there's not a time to go into that lower voice. I'm not sure about the word sweet that you used, but, but the calmer, good, good job. Let's go sit, good, focus on me, good. Like there's, there's definitely room for that but in, in a most heightened state of mind of, oh my God, what's that? Puppy, let's go, come on, good, let's go, good job, sit, good. Like you, you gotta switch it up, in, in my opinion, you gotta switch it up. You've gotta show that dog that you control the environment and they don't need to worry so much. Okay, so hopefully that kind of rings a bell for, for you. Hopefully that made sense. Um, all right, guys. It looks like, woo, I made it. No, I didn't make it through all my questions. Okay. <laughs> thought I, I thought I made it. <laughs> Nicole says, puppy only barks at people when outside on our front lawn, um, but never out in public. <laughs> that is territorial barking. Any advice? Um, yes, you do need to tell your puppy no, but as I've talked about before, you can't just say no <laughs> because they don't, they, they're like, okay, five seconds later, go and bark again or less than that. You have to say, no, do this. So you need to show your puppy what you want them to do. Um, and what I mean by that is you're going to have to work with them and really organically give them something to do. So you are out in the front, puppy is on leash, maybe with a chew toy or something. You've got your food with you. Someone walks by at the first sign of your puppy noticing that they hear anything, you may not even know what it is, it doesn't matter, well, watch your dog. The first sign that your puppy hears something, it's like, Daisy, sit, place, good, and you redirect them right away. And I very likely might need to get up and give space. So it's like, if this is the fence um, and we're here, pressure off, then pressure back on again, puppy come pressure back on again. You have to work your dog through it. Um, you might have to practice. And what I mean by that is you can't just do it when it happens organically. You need to have people come by and really actively work on this. Um, the next thing I'm gonna say uh, is kind of hard, hard for a lot of people to hear, but I have this really simple <laughs> concept that I say, if you give your puppy freedom of your home, if you give your dog freedom of the front yard, the backyard, you're creating a guard dog. Like that you're, you're actually saying, here's your front yard, do, do with it what you, what you will. And so um, that is a bit of an oversimplification, but, but it happens all the time. So I do kind of want you to have that in your mind. So if your puppy is in the front yard, you're with them and, um, and they're on leash. So, and you're actively doing something. They're either actively chewing on some Kong that you gave them, or you're actively playing with them or working with them. There is no freedom to, to hang out in the front yard. Now, if you can only do potty breaks in the front yard, that gets tricky because you have to disengage from the dog, from the puppy, to um, you know get them thinking about going and pottying. So I'm not saying that, that that's gonna be easy uh, because if you have to do that, that's what you have to do. But if you have a choice, you wanna go somewhere else for the potty training and then only be really present with, um, with your dog whenever you're uh, working in the front yard. The same thing in the house, freedom, freedom in the house does the same thing. And then just what I had mentioned earlier is how are you setting your puppy up to feel about the house? I know it's a puppy, but they can still wait with you at the, at the door, not just blow through the door. 
When people come in the door, do they immediately get attention? Or if someone comes through the gate um, and the puppy runs up and they immediately get physical attention, it's just a different type of arousal that they're getting praised for. So then that transitions into um, being a little bit like, this is my front yard, it's all arousal. So just really you know, watch what you're praising, watch what you're telling good job for, and just kind of keep some of that stuff in mind and hopefully, hopefully that'll help. Um, but when I say be in your front yard, puppy on leash, food on you, place caught on you, you're ready, you know, that's, <laughs> it's a lot of work, but that's what I mean. <laughs> okay, Cheryl says exactly, yes, thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, just a reminder is uh, next week, let's make sure I get to my notes here, okay. Next week, you can submit questions beforehand, and uh, the replays will be available to watch. We're also always posting clips and things like that. I just want to thank everybody for joining. But next week, Wednesday, same time, it's uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So thank you, guys.